Behringer and Midas console audio routing is confusing. Therefore, do not confuse the difference between internal outputs and external outputs. This topic could be the biggest reason for confusion when routing audio on these platforms. If we have not met, hi, I'm Nathan from Crazy Amazing Designs. I'm starting here on the screen on my X32 by navigating to the routing out tab. On the edit software on my computer, it looks like this and is called out one through 16. On the console screen, it looks like this. Either way, this page handles the internal X32 routing. All the other routing tabs handle the external audio routing into and out of the X32 console. Every X32 mixer has a total of 16 internal outputs that can be assigned from this page. These internal outputs allow us to choose which 16 internal audio mixes will be available to send to external outputs. Routing audio in the X32 is a lot about choosing a source and sending it to an output. That's why I wanna make sure that we understand the difference between internal outputs and external outputs. The sources that can be assigned to internal outputs one through 16 are as follows. Main left and right mix, mix bus is one through 16, matrix one through six, direct channel outs one through 32, direct out auxiliaries one through eight, direct out effects one through four, both left and right, and monitor left and right with talkback. For a typical setup where I've got my X32 and then I've got my eight XLR outputs on my stage box or on my X32 mixer, I'm gonna go ahead and assign mix bus one through six to be output one through six. Then main left and right, I'm gonna assign that to output seven and eight. This gives me six unique mix bus mixes for stage monitors, live stream audio, subwoofers, lobby speakers, and then I'm gonna use seven and eight will be outputting to my house sound system. Looking around the routing menu tabs, you will see that the aux out tab can also have these internal sources assigned to physical outputs. Internal sources such as mix left right, mix bus one through 16, matrix one through six, can all be assigned to these physical quarter inch auxiliary outputs. Taking that one step further, the auxiliary outs that you assign here are sent to quarter inch connectors on the local console, but they also become digital outputs like the internal outs that we've been talking about. This way they can also be assigned to local XLR out connectors or to AES50 stage box outputs. Now that we have assigned our internal sources to internal outputs, those outputs one through 16, we can now assign those internal outputs one through 16 to hardware outputs. Yes, I'm using the term terms outputs again, but this time I'm talking about external outputs. This is where we're gonna send the audio to outside of the mixer. I'm in routing and I'm starting on the XLR tab because no matter what X32 mixer you have, it has physical XLR output connectors on the back. The full console has 16 outputs. The compact and rack models have eight. This XLR tab is where you assign sources to those physical output connectors. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and assign my internal outputs one through four and five through eight to these eight output connectors. This is a powerful truth about understanding X32 routing. I wanna show you some common mistakes that I often see from users while I'm in these training meetings that I do with church tech people like yourself over Zoom. Often it's with somebody one-on-one -on -one who's trying to understand their system better or it might be with a team training over the whole church's tech. If that is something you're interested in, go to my website and find a time on my calendar that works for you. Then go ahead and sign up for a training session. Find all the information at crazyamazingdesigns.com slash training. One thing that I often see is that users get confused about the difference between this internal and external routing in the X32. Here's a practical example. I'm still on the XLR tab where we just routed those internal outputs to external XLR connectors. I often see users selecting external inputs for external outputs. This means selecting local one through eight as my XLR connector output one through eight. With this setup, if I connect a mic to local in one on the back of my mixer, I'm going to hear that mic and only that mic on XLR output connector one on the back of my console. This is not what I'm looking for as this is directly outputting the input to the mixer.
I want to send a mix bus matrix or main left and right to this output connector, which is what people want to do. And they accidentally make this mistake. One more example, then I'll move on. It's just as common to see a user selecting AES 50 a one through eight as the source for my XLR connectors output one through eight. This is confusing because now when I connect a mic to channel one on my stage box, connected to AS50A, we now hear that audio directly output to my OUT1 connector. What you get in is what you get out, because these are in blocks of four or eight. Any input connected to the stage box inputs will now be output directly to the XLR out connectors on the back of this X32 console. There will be no mix, no volume control, no EQ, or any other type of control. What you get in is what you get out. Let me break that down real quick. Here I have my SD8. There's a shielded ethernet cable connecting the A port of this stage box to the A port on the X32 rack here. If I go to the XLR tab in routing, this is where I select my sources for my eight XLR output connectors. If I select AS50A one through four and five through eight here and send those to my outputs, whatever I connect to this connector right here is going to come out of the first XLR connector port on the X32 rack. Not what I want. I want it to be a mix that comes out, not this connector directly. Again, we want to select a mix bus, a matrix, or main left right to this output connector. How we do this is by selecting one of the 16 internal outputs and assigning those to physical connectors. So here's output, let's say output one, and we've got mix bus one assigned to it. So now if I go over to the XLR tab, I've got output one set to output one. So now mix bus one is going to output one on the XLRs. Now let's take this logic to the AS50 tabs A and B, and they're both associated with their respective connector that the stage boxes are connected to. Always use a shielded ethernet cable, connect to the A port on the stage box, but it does not matter which port you use on the front of house console. These AS50 A and B tabs are where we assign sources to the XLR output connectors on the connected stage boxes. These have nothing to do with the inputs to the mixer. With these stage boxes connected to the AS50 A port on the X32, you will only get eight XLR outputs, which means you only use this first column. With these stage boxes connected to the AS50A port on the X32, you will get 16 XLR outputs, and you will also use the second column. You can daisy chain stage boxes, but that makes things more confusing for what we're talking about right here. Either way, we want to send our internal outputs to these external outputs. So I'll send internal out one through eight and out nine through 16, to AS50A 1 through 8 and AS50A 9 through 16. Now we have routed what we picked on the output 1 through 16, the internal outputs, to the physical outputs on our stage boxes. The same way we send these internal outputs to the XLR connectors on our mixer. I wanna mention the importance of the signal tap column that you're gonna see when you assign internal sources to internal outputs. By default, you should keep them set to post fader. On the edit software, you will see colored circles that you can just right click to change the tap point. There is a quick reference chart for the colors across the bottom of the window. I also wanna mention there are two places to assign taps. The first one is in the edit software, click on any channel and go to the sends tab. Across the top, you can pick the tap of this channel to any of the outputs. And the second one is in the routing out one through 16 tab, pick where the internal source is tapped to go to the internal output. There is a lot more that I could say about signal taps, so I'm saving that for another video. Click the card here to check that video out. There is also more routing on this X32. For example, the user routing feature is very useful. If you'd like to learn more on that topic, click on this playlist to learn more about X32 and the routing that makes it useful or not. If you have questions, leave them in this video or send me an email. If you're interested, then sign up for a Zoom training session. I also do trainings on ProPresenter, live streaming, lighting, cameras. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye everybody.